the main event. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you from ringside. Wrestling was basically an alternative to boxing at the time, which is to say that the same people that would go to a boxing match would go to a wrestling match, with the expectation being that wrestling was real and that these men were actually fighting each other. One of the things we wanted to do with this was toy with the idea of Crabtree being the one who uncovers the fact that wrestling as we now know it is a stage outcome. It's more theatrical than it is athletic. You can never beat me, Gladiator. You're nothing. I am the greatest wrestler there ever was. I think the biggest single determining factor that made the wrestling stuff work in that episode is that I've made the decision to cast wrestlers first and actors later. Having seen these guys wrestle numerous times over the past six or eight months, I knew that all the wrestling sequences, they could stage them all themselves. Obviously, it's very athletic, but there's a theatrical element. I helped choreograph most of the fight scenes, and some of us are wrestlers, and we've wrestled each other before, which makes it super easy. Uh, but some of them aren't wrestlers at all, so we had to give the quickest uh, wrestling school lesson ever. This is like a kind of like a big dream for me to be doing an acting role and get to wrestle. It was a lot of fun. I've never been in a wrestling room before, so at the end of this, I'm dropping an elbow from on somebody for sure from the top rope. I did a nice tree fall at the end when I got smoted by a fake chair. It was fake. Don't worry, it was fake, and uh, I was proud of that. It's been such a blast. I'm a professional wrestler, so this is not necessarily my regular element. Uh, I'm in the ring, but I'm not working with uh, such an amazing crew and as many cameras as we have here today. So this is just magical. We had five and a half hour rehearsal a couple days ago. We've got the actors doing their stuff. We've got the stunt actor, wrestlers doing their stuff. We have Crabtree that's thrown into the mix at the end of it all. Professional wrestlers, they're, they're basically stunt performers, right? They do the exact same things that we do, except a lot of times they don't have a camera, they have a live audience. So my biggest uh, challenge, if you will, was to make them camera friendly as opposed to audience friendly. And uh, they've come around no problem. All of the guys that have been brought in to play the wrestlers and to actually do the physical wrestling have been uh, you know, a great bunch of guys. They're enthusiastic and uh, energetic about it. These guys most of the time do this for no real glory. They do it because they like it. So they're, they're happy to be here. We're happy to have them. It's just been a whole lot of fun and, and everybody's really liking it and they're clapping and it's, it's a fun day at work today. Well, we were going to use a stunt double for Johnny Harris when he gets thrown out of the wrestling ring. But Johnny being Johnny, we found that we didn't need the stunt double and Johnny did it himself. I feel tired and a little bit trembly. I mean, not very good shape. I mean, as you saw, that fight lasted about you know, 30, 40 seconds and we only did two takes. Yeah, there was a little flip involved. I mean, I'm more or less doing a front roll, but the, the ring is set up to be very loud at any impact, so that sort of helps sell the violence of it. We threw in a little nod to an episode from last season of Kung Fu Crabtree, where uh, Crabtree learns the spinning heel kick. So he tries that on the Cossack with uh, less success than last season. And it's turned into an atomic drop, which of course all wrestling fans will know. One guy lifts up another guy and bangs his arse against your knee. So there's comedy in that already. Anytime you get hit in the ass, that's comedy gold. I think if I hit the gym hard, I could be ready for career wrestling in four or five years. Who am I kid? It's great to be back in Dundas. Lucky for us, we were able to find this great old building uh, and put the ring inside here. Dundas, where Murdoch Mystery has been doing a lot of their filming lately, which we're very happy about, is uh, actually located within Hamilton. It's the further west end of the city and certainly has a really uh, unique history. Large manufacturing base, Dundas Creek was really a catalyst for a lot of the manufacturing that started there. But certainly over the years evolved and is what it is today. And it's it's got a fairly significant historic center and fine shopping and fine dining as well. They have uh, quite a few restaurants that are very unique to Dundas. In the downtown area there you can walk around quite easily and, and make a day of it with all there is to see and do there. They have the Niagara Scarpment, the waterfalls down through the Dundas Valley so they've got that connection to the outdoor experience. So quite a thriving community. Henderson and I had an arrangement. I do the maneuver and he acts like a dazed him. And then I take the championship. 
I think I know what you're saying, Mr. Hummer, and I think the idea of Henderson giving up his championship in a fake maneuver, difficult to believe. Crabtree's been a constable for eight years, and he's a good constable. He's often the one who walks into a scene with the evidence that cracks the case. We figured it only stands to reason that Crabtree would eventually be presented with an opportunity to move on, and whether he would take it or not, we thought would be an interesting world to explore. It's uh, uh, an exciting prospect for Crabtree, but he's a bit torn, you know, I mean, if he gets the promotion to detective, it's at a different station house. So he'll leave Murdoch and Brackenreed and the, the gang there in a way that's sort of what he has to do. So we'll see. How does a barber end up owning the whole building? Simple. I save 10% of my earnings and I never buy anything frivolous. Why put in new flooring when you can throw down a rug? <laughs> so lots of the wife. I'm the author of The Wealthy Barber and I am playing a wealthy barber. And they did a great job of writing the character in, in a very smooth way. It's not forced at all. It's a good part of the story. And I was very impressed. Without any exaggeration, my mother is 10 times more excited that I'm on this show, that I'm on Dragon Stand, or that I wrote The Wealthy Barber. She couldn't care less. She's all excited about the fact that I'm on Murdoch Mysteries. This is big news.